Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And do you, your day to day, um, have you looked in all of the uncertainty? Is there parts of your week that you can be certain about? Parts of my, my weekend or my week? Your week, your entire week. Are there parts of your week that you know you can structure and know what's going on with them? Well, at this stage, yes, with work, like I know that I have to be in here certain days and stuff. And like Monday, today is my product run day. Mm -hmm. So I can do all of that, but apart from that, not really, because with everything that's going on, like the PM changes his mind and I'm just waiting for that call of when he's going to shut me down, basically. Okay, and what are you going to do when that happens? Uh, pull my kids out of home, out of school and start homeschooling until all this craziness is over with. Okay, great. So you, that's clear. So you know what that plan is? Yeah. Okay. So you know the days that you're going to be going to work at the moment, yes? Yes. Okay, so what's your plan on those days? Do you know what you need to do, when, where, and what, and how, and why? Yeah. Okay, does that create clarity? Yes. And that feels good? Yes. Okay, great. Let's focus on the fact that you actually do have some clarity in those days. Yeah. <laughs> and... The other parts, what is it about those other days that doesn't feel clear? Um, probably because I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything when I'm so used to going out, doing things or running errands or stuff like that. And then those days we're not allowed really out of the house. So I have nowhere to go. I've got nothing to do except for stuff around the house, which I've already done because the weekends we're not going anywhere. So I'm spending my whole weekend cleaning my house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So what else could you be doing? Is there anything you ever wanted to do that could be filling up your time? Is there stuff that, is there still things that you could be doing? Like there, there's got to be other things that are there that you're just avoiding. Um, mm. What do you enjoy doing? I work basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if the kids aren't home, then if my house is clean, I binge watch TV and stuff like that. But that's about it. Okay. okay. So is there more facets of you that you'd like to explore maybe? <laughs> um, I don't really know. Not really. I don't. I tend to stick in my bubble and mm -hmm. I have my stuff that I do because obviously when this isn't on, I don't have time to do anything else. So I don't start projects or things like that because I don't have time to finish them if I start them. Wow. How exciting. You've now got time to start looking at these things. Yes. True. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah, you see what I'm getting at? So, yeah. you know, you, you want clarity, you want these things, but I also know you have a mind that is very, very smart and very creative. Your, your natural mm -hmm. genius is that you are creative. Yeah. And you're now being given time to go and explore that. Who is Shanae without work? Who is Shanae without children? Yeah. She's not, she's not Netflix. No, I'm not. Right. What does looking at uh, what does it look like to go and explore Shanae? What are some things you could be doing? Let's have a look at your PH60 profile. Do you have it on your phone? Uh, yep. Uh, where am I? Let's go to Genius. Love everyone who's watching the replay to go into your Genius. Right now is the time to step into your Genius zone, which is also known as career. Once it loads. Come on, wake up. They generally enjoy learning Mama, about. Do you mean on our app? Yep, yep, on your app. I'd love everyone right now in COVID 19. Now is the time that we get to get 
really cool and clear about some things about ourselves because we're being stripped away from everything that we busied ourselves with and we're quietening our mind, we're quietening our energy and suddenly this anxiety is popping up because the persona that we've been living for so long is being stripped away from us and we're being forced to face the elements of ourselves that maybe we've been too busy to actually acknowledge in the past. Okay. Very deep. So I've got it up. Pick a, pick a phrase. Have a read for a minute. Pick a phrase. Pick one that you're like, actually, cool. <laughs> all right i might not be a good fit for direct sales strategies as i tend to avoid imposing on or pers pers persuading people to purchase things oh, oh, so, so the tips are although persuading others may not be your strength but direct sales might be a strong way for you to be in sales inside and outside of your work career so um Persuading people isn't isn't your strength, but indirect sales. Yeah. So you, what you do when you're washing someone's hair is you would recommend a better product that you think might go well for them, right? Mm -hmm. You'll see the pattern I of how their going. hair is presenting. Yeah. Okay, okay. But you would you would see a need for that, like, wouldn't you? If you're if you're recommending a thing, you might notice that their hair is brittle or their hair is yeah. yellowing easy, and then you know a product that would fix that problem for them, right? Yeah. Yeah. And but my problem is, is like, I know what everyone needs, but I hate pushing things on people and I hate trying to sell things. What could you create? Okay, so you've now got a, oh, my brain just did some fun things. Okay, so you hate selling. Uh -huh. So what if, what could you create? I know the answer to this. What could you create that would enable you to not have to sell, but for it to be very, very visually obvious what people need so they make the decision themselves? Um, like, Katie's in the online space. She might know something like this. Photos around what the difference is, maybe? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what would get people's eye? Like, it, would it be pointing out their problem? Would it be showing them? Would it be, um, like, I keep going with that. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go for a bit. And then when you get to a point, I'll, and you want me to give you some ideas, I'll, I'll assist. But I want you to go a little bit further into the photos. What else could you do? Um... <laughs> We're now being forced to go online and create content and data and things that are online to assist people getting through this time from their homes. Could probably create some like maybe phrases or something or I don't know, like a meme to describe on what's the best thing for your hair and why it's so good for it. I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what else could you do? Keep the ball rolling. You're great with patterns. You're great with being creative. You're a very creative soul. Um, what do you look at when you look on social media? When I look on social media, um, I find imperfections in hair. Great. And then what, how do you, when you're learning things or you're curious about something and you stop and you watch something, what are you watching normally? Uh, generally new techniques to do things to hair. Great. And how does that been, has that been presented to you? Is it a picture? Is the it a videos, video? Videos, generally. Right, right. Can you see how you could actually take everything you know and your, your problem with direct selling and just become an information hub? And how naturally when people start to see that, they go, she's not selling to me, she's helping me. She's pointing out the problem that I already know I have. And now she's giving me the solution. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. You're very creative. You've got a really good eye for technique. 
you can help people to know what they need to be looking for as a problem and then show them the solution. You, there's lots of technology out there on your phone that would boost your business right now. If the government took things away, what could you do? Could you be sending out products to people? Yeah. Right. So how are they going to know what product is good for them? Me giving them more information about the products. Yes. Yes. So you could be going along and getting pictures of, and this is just me giving you like, uh, this is what I do for businesses as well, is give them ideas about how to do social media, how to do their business branding. So what is it that you pick at? When you're scrolling through something, is it some celebrity's hair picture and you're like, eh, that thing, oh, she's got it. Oh, she'd fix that. Generally, it, it ranges from like, if I see a haircut that's not straight, which drives me insane. Um, blotchy colour or colour that's not even, like imperfections in their colours. Um, split ends everywhere drive me mad and fuzziness on hair and not. Okay, I, I, so look at what are the things that could be fixed from home and what are the things that could have people chomping at the bit? Because they can come still yeah. see you at the moment, can't they? Yeah, definitely. Right, so if you were to take those pictures and be like, don't be that friend and let your friends do this. You know, you know how like, there's always those memes of like that bitch of a friend who allows their friend to have that spot on their face and yeah. they're like, don't be that friend, right? Yeah. Don't be that friend to let your friends look like this. So how creative would it be to create that, create the branding where you're the friend, you're that friend that everyone turns to and goes, oh, Shanae wouldn't let me have that bad hairdo or Shanae wouldn't let me have that bad colour. And she's even showing me what to look for. She's even showing me how to fix it. She's even giving me the solution, right? Do you see how that creates a brand for you? Yeah. How do yeah. you feel about that sort of side of things? What do you think you could do? What, like, with everything I've said there, what do you think you would actually, is there anything in there you would actually enjoy doing at the moment? So we um, I do not particularly like doing videos or stuff like that, I think. And that written. comes back to my anxiety because of people judging and all of that. Mm. But I definitely could do like some, like rights. I'm better off with like ah, pictures and writing things and um, that sort of stuff because it means that people aren't looking at me directly and. Well, that's Not what you'd have judging. to do. You could just get their picture of that thing that you're going, oh, there's the thing. And you could be like, this is what to look for. Mm -hmm. Have you seen? Have you experienced? Right? Yeah. You don't even have to talk in it or be seen in it. You could just become the brand that points out these things with love. Like, hey, look at this beautiful girl. She's got great skin, great this. Unfortunately, yeah. what I noticed was, because that's not being bitchy, right? You, you would yeah. find a way of not being bitchy at all. Yeah. Does that feel like, what is that? Is that stirring something in you or are you like, oh, I don't feel like doing that? Yeah, no, that's a really good idea. I didn't think of doing something like that. I feel like that would be good. Yeah. That would give Definitely. you some time. That would use up some of your time. You'd yeah. be able to scroll through social media still. Yeah. It'd create a brand. It would have people recognizing you, following you, wanting to know what thing you're going to point out next. Yeah. And that takes away from that direct sales. That becomes an indirect sale. Yeah. And keeps you in business. That's actually really, really good. And you could then have, if you get that working well enough, you would be able to keep your staff employed mm -hmm. because you would need them to assist you with packaging and posting. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh. I like that. I'm that writing that sense. down now. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to me anytime you need. Sorry, I'm having issues with my headphones. What I was that? Seen it. Um, <laughs> I said, like, that's, um, this is what I do. I was actually going to go into business consulting, but never did. I'm great at helping other people do it myself, not always. You so should. You're very <laughs> clever. The other thing I've noticed looking at your profile, and I'm not sure if you have either, is that there's a lot about here about occupying your mind with scientific and comprehensive topics. You could find all the science and all the comprehensive stuff about what you're doing with hair, right? Yeah, which That's why I enjoy. you know so much. Right, right. Is there a course that you've been meaning to? Is there something that you, what can you, you're saying you may, you're worried about the anxiety of the things you can't control. So mm -hmm. what you can control right now is what you're doing with you. So what are some things that you could do right now to occupy your mind and help calm, distract you from the anxiety of what you can't control? 
Um, I mean, her side of stuff, I'm good. Like, I know all my stuff. I would love eventually to go into trigonometry and stuff like that with the hair, like the hair side of it. But that's really in depth and like, it's a huge course to do. Um, And like we've, I said to Lauren who works for me this year, we're going to do a lot more courses, which is good just to keep our skills up. But unfortunately with everything, we can't really do courses. Three online components. Um, but I've been looking into doing like some business courses and stuff like that just to help me out that side of things and like some social media stuff because I suck with social media. I hate social media. Can we see how this is unfolding now? Like, can you see yeah. how that conversation started where you were like, I don't, I've got too much time. I cleaned all my house. I'm bored. And I'm anxious. <laughs> hmm. There's a creative inner part of you that's bursting for this. Yeah, definitely. There's this tantalising side of you that is fucking creative and itching for time and you've just been given time. Yeah, which then I automatically always go, how do I deal with that time? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Do you have a schedule? So what I was getting at before was also like, so you know the days you need to work and you know what you need to do on those days and you have time constraints, right? So when you go to work, you know when you got to get up, when you got to be out of the house, when you got to be doing this. Where in the other parts of your days, your week, can this be? Like, does that make you feel good when you know you got to go to work and you have a schedule of how your day is structured? Yes, yeah. So how can you create that in the rest of your week? We know there is always going to be time when shit's going to fuck up and mm-hmm. you're not going to have it work. And that's where we get to be okay with it. What else can we do? Like with the other days in the week and stuff like that. Yeah. I can definitely set out a plan of, okay, this day I'm working on this or this part of the day, like before noon, I'm going to be doing online contact. After lunch, I'm going to be doing business stuff. Okay, what's it going to take for you to create that? Me getting on my off my ass and actually writing it out and doing a list and making it happen. And when are we doing that? Um, as soon as I get home. Yay. I'm about five minutes away from my kids because apparently school holidays started today. Yes, <laughs> yes. So is there a conversation, mate? What do we need to do when you get home to allow that to happen? Um... First get my children lunch. Mm -hmm. Then after lunch, they can go and hopefully if it's not raining, run around outside while I do what I need to do. Yay. And what could get in the way of this? My husband. (laughs) Okay. And what could you do to counteract that? I don't know. Create a distraction and get him out of the house. (laughs) Shiny object. Shiny object. Get away. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Pretty much. That's what I need. (laughs) Okay, so we're aware of what could come up. We're aware of what we want to be doing. And we're excited to be doing what we need to do because what's that going to create? Uh, More stuff for me to do. And more? Structure. Yes, and more? Uh, Business. And more? (laughs) Clarity. Uh Clarity. There we go. Yep, that's the one. Because what do we start off this conversation with? I have no clarity and I'm stressed because I don't know what to do with myself. (laughs) And how do you feel now? (laughs) Much more relaxed. (laughs) Yay. Yay. This is why coaching's awesome because by ourselves, we just end up in this whirlwind, right? Yep. Yeah, definitely. And I'm good at putting myself in a whirlwind. Diplomat life. (laughs) (laughs) We all have coaches. I have a coach who I do this with. He's also my business partner. That's handy. It's called workshopping. It's called workshopping. It's why I'm going to keep these calls going because we're going to need to workshop this stuff time and time and time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. So by, if I messaged you at eight o'clock tonight, do you think you would have it done? Possibly. 
Would there How about I just time? say yes because my husband goes to work at five, my kids go to work at bed at seven thirty. So if I haven't managed to sit down and do some then, at least then I've got half an hour to sit down and create something. Wonderful. Cool. So eight o'clock I'm checking in on you. Okay, done. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Blake, do you mind if I come and get you in in a few minutes? Is that at all possible? I'm your time. No. <laughs> Stop it. Excellent. Eight o'clock. Okay, Katie, how are you going, my darling? Oh, you're muted. Hello, yeah. hello. What did you get from all of that? Um, well, it just reminds me that everyone's just dealing with what they're dealing with. It is what it is. And um, what, what, um, yeah, what we're all being thrown to some sort of form of chaos or turmoil or, or change like there's change and change will bring about either fear or an opportunity and it's about that conversation you just had then is about really transferring that fear over into an opportunity because mm -hmm. there's plenty there's plenty of opportunities and um um i'm i'm pretty i yeah, I'm torn at the moment because I've got so much to do. You know, I want to do so much. I want to produce so much content. I want, you know, whether I like social media or not, it, it's a platform. It's a shop front. Like, who gives a shit what anyone thinks of anything? Twitter, Instagram, stories. It's an avenue to promote your business's services, and that's the way forward now. Yep. And yep. traditional businesses... Um, can, can adapt in this environment, in these circumstances, and new, new businesses will flourish. I mean, I, I write a lot, so I journal a lot. I'm, write, I'm reading The Magic at the moment. That's all about Yay. gratitude. Yeah, it is a brilliant, brilliant, amazing book. And I'm writing my blogs, and I've got so much content. I don't know, some, sometimes I still have my own insecurities about you know is this what my readers need or want or is this interesting to them but then you know my 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 heart's in the right place and it will attract the people that need to know what i say and do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know it's everything from how to handle anxiety depression deal with frustration, change, tension. I mean, there's tension in my, my world, in my home. You know, everyone's adapting. It depends what we eat. And, you know, I've been having lots of conversations with um, my husband about the kids are kind of like ratty because are they mirroring how we communicate with each other and or is it the food they eat? And, you know, what mm. what, what is... You know, we can do so many things to keep calm, to ground ourselves, and it's got to come down to the cellular level. I spent uh, some time on the weekend playing tennis with my son in the backyard. We don't have any sort, sort of space for a tennis court, but we've got a little net and we're just doing like volleys. Mm -hmm. So in the, the smaller space, and it was fun, but I was also listening to, um, what's his name? Pete Evans, that chef who's written the book Heal and he was going to speak at the doTERRA conference this month and he's quite fascinating but again you know it's the water you drink it's the mindset you have it's the food you eat and you know I sent you that picture funnily I didn't realize you're on a call right now because I'm still adjusting to daylight saving mm -hmm. I am absolutely under the pump working full time, going to a very hectic work environment, um, dealing with all the changes there, and then coming home and trying to be, 
you know, of service to my own, myself, my family, do my journaling, do my stuff, do my oils. I've been making hand sanitizer like it's going out of fashion. Um, can't keep up with the orders, trying to source product. It's it's fun, exciting, but it's also tiring. It, and, and and occasionally I go, this is all too much. Mm -hmm. The kids want me to play a game with them and I'm busy on my computer. And so, you know, it is finding the balance still in it all for me because not a lot's changed just yet. You know, you were going to say? Have you sat down and written out your daily schedule? So the same as Shanae, we're all diplomats. So I'm actually pointing this out because it's real relevance. And there was a massive aha moment that I had over the weekend when I actually sat down and wrote down 8am, wake up, 8.15, lemon drink and shower, 8.30, like, oh, sorry, wake up, yoga, meditate, shower, blah, 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 blah. And yes, there are two days, three days of the week where that doesn't work for me because I'm here with working for Megan. But the structure at which I want to do things and knowing, so there was two things I did. I wrote down on the board everything that I wish to, need to, want to, have to do. And then I wrote down my day. And when I really looked at it, I went, I've actually got time to spend 15 minutes doing that. I've got time to spend half an hour on emails. I have time to sit there and spend blah, 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 blah. And I looked at my day and Diplomat's biggest thing is not enough time. I don't have time. Or I have too much time and I don't know what to do with myself because I'm not planning my time. So often for persons like you and I who think that there's not enough time in the world, I did a post about it actually last night in, the, in my groups, is that I was like, I actually wrote, I've gone through and set timers on my phone to now be like, half an hour, an hour of power. And the hour of power, which you would know about in the online world, is the hour where you're like, just fucking do the work, turn everything else off and do that thing. When we sit there and look at our day in that structure, what really becomes apparent is we actually have a lot more time, but what we will often do is pick up five things at once and try and do all of them in that time. Do the cleaning, do the eating, do the cooking, do the emails, do the Facebook message, do this, do this, do this. And we're doing nothing at once, but we're doing everything at once. So when you actually look at what you need to do and then structure it, we can actually sit there and go, actually, I have enough time to do everything if I just make sure that in that time frame I do that thing and get it done. Mm. Because diplomats were well, the biggest, the, 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 the smallest resource that we have is serotonin. The greatest thing that we need is serotonin. And serotonin is from the reward center when we achieve something. Mm. So for diplomats, the reason why I say schedule your time and create the checklists is because that creates the serotonin, that creates the reward center. And that's why I said to Sinead, what's the easiest thing you can win at? Mm. Start your day with the simplest things. Hey, I got up and I meditated and I did my, my few stretches, which I'm going to call yoga because that sounds more impressive. And now, and now I've, oh, wow, I've achieved that. That's feels, that's feels better. Okay, now I can go and I can have a look at that, getting lunch ready for the kids and getting this ready and getting it. Oh, shit, I did that. Great. There's that little serotonin hit. So where's the things in the morning that you can get done at the small serotonin hits that will then allow you to feel more empowered to do the bigger things later on in the day? Because diplomats are about creating slow in the morning and more pace in the afternoon, right? So looking at your day, you know you've got heaps to do. I just get up earlier. Yep. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I just, yeah, I, I operate on a lot less sleep. And, you know, it's, it's fine when it's, um, you know, like I feel very passionate and, you know, excited and inspired and my energy does sort of fluctuate. But I can also hit a wall and, and, and you know, if there's only, I, I, I don't know if, if I can really, I certainly can't sustain what I'm doing at the pace I'm doing. But at the moment, I feel like there's no alternative like it's all important it's all good it's all got to be done so it is about um and i'm learning you know i'm learning as i go too you know i don't necessarily have it all down pat i haven't you know there's still lots of elements of setting up a new house and getting it to function and flow and that's hit and miss and stop and start and explaining to children or um, husband or whatever. It's a lot. There's a lot going on. It doesn't just, you know, and I don't care what the prime minister says. I don't, I, I really don't care what all the conspiracy theories are. 
what I care about is the space I'm in and how I'm feeling. And if, you know, I'm trying to do it with eating according to my profile and eating better foods, but I also have a battle on my hands because my husband's got a sort of fixed way of eating, thinking, shopping, buying. And it's, it's not, it doesn't, you know, putting something green on the plate is sometimes just not important to him. Oh, can I share a story with you that may give you some perspective? Sure. It's not a direct reference to you. Um, Shanae will actually be able to know very much about this. Um, my housemate is a wonderful example of this. Wonderful. Her partner eats pies, sausage rolls, meat, potatoes, minimal veg. His veg is corn and peas, right? And maybe some broccoli if you're fucking lucky. She will get and make her own food. He will drink his coffee until 10 o'clock at night and he will play his games and yell at his thing. And she goes, you know what? I fucking hate it. But it keeps him happy, keeps him out of my hair, and he does his thing. And as long as he's happy, I can actually remove myself from his outcome and know that it's his body and his life. And as much as I love him and I want him to be around forever, me bitching and moaning at him just makes us fight. So she lets him do it. And she's been a big awakening for me leaving Brad and coming into moving in with them. Because I watch them and I'm like, I couldn't have a partner like this. Like that would drive me crazy. But she goes, why would I? I love him. I love who he is. When he's not doing those things, I love the being that he is. I love our relationship. He yeah. loves me like no other. So, and this is something that I realize I ruined my relationship with Brad with because I wanted him to be what I wanted him to be, but I couldn't love him for who he was. That was my downfall. So what has been beautiful is living with Kelsey and Clint is that she just goes, you eat what you want, hun. I, if I have to make my own food, I'll make my own food. And if you're going to make for you and the kids, you make for you and the kids. And he'll put these vegetables on the kids' plates, but he just won't eat it. So she's like, that's you, whatever. When you whinge about your, your body not working and stuff, I'll hear you. She has to remember not to try and fix him. It's a beautiful conversation because both of them are like, I just want you to hear me. I don't want you to fix me. I already know what the problem is. Sometimes I just want you to hear me. Right? How many times do we do this to ourselves and to our partners? They just want to be heard. We just want to be heard. But mm. far too often, because we know better, we step into the space of trying to fix rather than just hearing. Not everybody wants to be heard. They just need, not everybody wants to be fixed. They want to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I think when I'm working full time, and then, you know, and the, the, you know, that means he's responsible for the shopping and thinking and yeah, I give guidance and, you know, I go through the recipes and I say, need these ingredients and he's more than happy to get them. Mm -hmm. Good. But, you know, Good. I, I it, it puts all the, a lot, a lot more load on me. Um, I'm, you know, grateful for what he does too, but it's, I, I do, I do. It's just in a current climate, you know, making sure children have got nutritious food. I don't want my children eating shit. Mm -hmm. I don't want them eating chocolate bars every other day. I just don't want it. And mm -hmm. it's like, that is just as fucking valid as, you know, what he wants. So, okay, you know, where's the middle ground and how's this going to work and how's this going to play out? Because so I don't want my eight year old I don't want my eight year old daughter have developing bad eating habits and not being aware. No, no. But beautifully you are you will never stop you will never stop gifting her the knowledge, right? I don't know. I don't have time, Shana. I'm you know, I'm I'm educating myself on like your program. I don't have all the answers. Why why am I on this program to learn mm. for mm. myself? I'm like fifty something. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. You know, beautiful. so, but these sort of things, you know, ha, that you can't be too young to learn this stuff. No, definitely not. And not quite frankly, the whole reason why the world's come to a grinding halt because it needs a reminder to go back to basics, go back to simplicity, go back to nature, go back to making food from scratch, mm. you know. I personally don't want to have to ever learn how to make pasta, but you know, for those that are home baking all day, lucky, you know, happy days to them. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But equally, I don't want to feed my kids pasta every second night of the week because that just fills them up. And that's what happens. And I don't want them just eating bread and butter Mm -hmm. because it Mm -hmm. fills them up. But there will be some days where that's going to happen because you're busy working. Well, some days, some days, some yeah. days but in the minimal, not in the main. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But that's the, that's the thing. That's where there's the imbalance. Is and, it, you know, but I can't, it, I can't, I can't, you know, I can only control what my choices are. What I, yes. You know, I, I have to be realistic as well. Good. Good. I'm glad and you said that. That's the thing when you have children and you've got responsibilities, but, you know, six months ago, I wasn't working full time. Now I, I am. Um, my mother was a raging alcoholic. And sometimes we had new nutritious food. And other times, more often than not, it became fetch, which meant that we would fend for ourselves. Um, my diet consisted wholly and solely of gluten and sugar and shit and whatever mum could buy for cheap. Most of my sisters and I became very aware ourselves. We ate lots of shit food lots so much shit food eventually we figured it out for ourselves because mum still loved us even though she was abusive and an alcoholic she still loved us Hmm. what i'm reason why i'm saying this is you you are wonderful and you teach your children great you live by example and eventually they will figure it out for themselves sure so what i'm coming back to is that you are incredible in what you do. You're passionate, you're driven, you work hard. They know that, they see that. Giving them the opportunity to choose better choices for themselves will take the response. But you're still gonna you're still gonna provide the food, but at the end of the day, it's their choices whether or not they're gonna eat it or whether or not they're gonna want it. Eventually, hmm. and when you sit there and go and they're they're acting a stink and you're like, Without judging them, you go, Do you realise you just ate a pizza and a packet of chips and now you're behaving this way? I don't appreciate it. And your, and your response would always be that educational thing of like, I'm not going to make you feel bad. I'm just going to make you realize the reason you're acting this way is because of the thing you chose to do before. So right now, I'm, I'm not going to respond to you because I just know that you're responding to the fact that you just ate terrible food and leave it at that. Then you're not owning it. It's not a part of you. You can still go out and do your right choices, right? But it's, it's really cool when you actually step back from trying to control the situation and go, right, well, I can't control that. Hmm. I've educated. All I can do is do me. And I'm going to eat my salad. I'm going to have energy. I'm going to be in a better mood. I'm going to be driven and passionate and all the rest of it. And come back into my own space of what I can control. And hmm. just know that eventually we all have the right to choose. Hmm. And we will. And if they choose poorly, that's their right. Right? Hmm. Because that's their lesson. That's their journey. Our journey is to learn from our mistakes. And I wouldn't be the health nut today if I didn't turn myself wheat and dairy intolerant. If I didn't binge on shit food for months on end, I wouldn't have learnt what I learnt if I didn't figure it out for myself. If my mum had told me everything, everything my mum said, I was like, nah, no way. I don't like that. I won't do that. I won't have that. Eventually, I figured it out for myself. And yours will too. You're incredible, Katie. You are a fucking incredible woman doing incredible things in this world. Oh, Your children can't help but figure it out for themselves eventually. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, you can only do your bit, but, you know, that's where I'm at, hon. So. Good. I'm so glad. And remember that, though. Remember that. You are incredible, and they will see that. Look after you, Katie. Oh, yeah, that's all I can try and do. <laughs> I need Does to that do feel, So when you're looking at what you were saying before, how, like, everybody and everything, it's like, well, we, we can't control them. Hmm. Oh, yeah, and I, that, that's why I think this time is all about looking inward and making sure. And I, I fall victim of that, like, not victim, but I fall into the trap of wanting to help others before myself, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but, you know, I've still got to serve myself to be in a position of you know, health and vitality to serve others. I've got, you know, I want to come from a good authentic place. And And wanting to help other people becomes an addiction to avoid ourselves. Yeah. Going and spending more time focusing on other people is the same as going and eating in the chocolate bar, right? 
because yeah. then you behave poorly because you're addicted to trying to fix everyone else and being in everyone else's business, right? So we're then eating the chocolate bar, fixing everyone else, and then we react and behave badly because we're in a toxic mindset because we're not in our own sphere. We're not fixing ourselves. We're not being balanced within ourselves because we're too busy projecting and being involved in everyone else's stuff. So drop mm. the chocolate bar and drop everyone else and come back to self. Come back to self. Love yourself. Because when you love you and you're okay with you, you can't fucking help but be this amazing, radiant, attractive source to everyone and everything around you. Mm. It's got goosebumps over that. Drop the chocolate bar of fixing other people and come back to you, Katie. Mm. They will, via osmosis, you'll become the most attractive energy in their life and they will not be able to help but want to do the things that connect them to you. Mm. Yeah. I want to cry with you right now. <laughs> I think that rings true in so many ways for, for all of us. When we're attractive, we are radiant because we love ourselves and people want that. They want that for themselves because you lead the example. And you're so close to that beautiful. You're so close to that. And you know there's that little bit more love that you need to give to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I try. So when you feel yourself grabbing that chocolate bar, which is helping other people and wanting to fix other people, come back to yourself. What are you not doing for yourself? Yeah. Oh, Katie, I want to hug you so bad right now. <laughs> Fucking social isolation. I can't hug anybody. <laughs> yeah. So where are the chocolate bars in your life right now? In your day? You've got a job that's demanding and you're here giving so much beautiful time to other people and incredible products. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know, at least I get a few days off over um, Easter. I'm having those extra four days off and oh, yes. uh, I just, just, you know, but I, I can't, I'll try and stop myself from being busy. Good. Good. Planning no. a day of not caring. As much as I've structured my stuff, my coach turned to me this morning and said, you need to structure a day where you can say, fuck the system that you've created, right? You still might need that morning where you're like, I'm going to sleep because I've said that I'm going to be up by eight o'clock, right? So now I'm like, Saturdays is the day where I'm like, I will wake up when I want to. And I'm yeah. not going to follow my structure. I'm going to deliberately rebel against the structure I created because I know yeah. I need it. Yeah. So if you need your structure every other day until Easter, maybe you've got a whole day at Easter where you're like, oh, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to have breakfast, ice cream sandwiches. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then be like, cool, now that's out of my system. Now what's the rest of my week going to look like? I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. But don't hold tickets on yourself. Freedom is what you really need. You really want that calm and relax. Yeah. Yeah. So allow for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I need, you know, the Easter long weekend and that week just to really have a relaxing time. Mm. I still do things, but... Oh, gosh, yes. We can't help but do things. <laughs> yeah, but I'll still put pressure on myself. I'll say that, but... Mm. Um, if I don't do it, it doesn't get done, put it that way. I get that. Simple. But it can get done at some point. We, we think we run out of time, but we don't. We think we don't have enough time, but we do. It will eventually get done. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's true. Right? The biggest, uh, another story, um, a regret I have that I'm okay with, there were many family holidays Brad took me away on. And when I would go away, I was like a whole week away with them. And I was like, I'm so busy. I can't do this, but I'm excited because then all my day to day stuff stops. And now I'll have time to create that book. And now I have time to do this. Now I have time to do that. And all he wanted was quality time. And I would make myself so busy that I was unavailable constantly. So busy that I would demand so much of myself and I'd never actually relax. 
my biggest reflection on my relationship with Brad was that I kept getting in my way of being a good partner, of being loving, and his quality time that he needed, I never gave him because I was always busy doing and creating and thinking I had to do all this stuff and be all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it stole from our relationship. I allowed mm-hmm. that. So as much mm. as you think you have a lot you need to get done, I think you should spend a whole day where you have nothing. Or maybe mm. even a half a day. If that feels too anxious, even just half a day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did some painting with the kids yesterday. Did you fix your bike? Wonderful. You're right, I'll come see you. <laughs> it didn't last long, though. Oh, really? <laughs> I got distracted. <laughs> See, that's fine though. When they get distracted, you're like, cool, we did the thing. I showed up. Mm-hmm. You created space for that. And it's the same as a, a puppy dog that's been. Puppy dog? Yeah, let's go with that. It's the same with a puppy dog that's been abused. I'm going to use that because it's brutal enough. To regain the trust of that puppy dog in a new home and a new environment, it's going to take time for it to learn that it's okay to trust right? Mm. Everyone in our life goes through the same thing. When we're workaholics and we abuse ourselves 24 seven and the relationships that we have by not being present and not showing up, it takes time for them to trust us again, right? It takes time for them to trust that we're going to give them our time and our attention because they're used to us offering it and then being busy and not mm. present. Mm. Beautiful awarenesses that have come from me being silent lately. Say that again. So the beautiful awarenesses that have come from me actually slowing the fuck down and being silent lately. I don't feel like I want to poke any more with you, Katie. I feel like we've, we've opened up a bit of a, a crack for you and agitated a few emotions in you that I think you'll now go, for, you'll figure it out. You're incredible at, at piecing this together and finding the space and the time. Do you feel like you want to go deeper into any of that? Uh, no, not at the moment. I, no. I think I have sort of some basic awareness around that. It's just what I put into practice in my daily life and I'm, Awareness without judgment too, please. (laughs) Yeah, that's a big one. Don't judge yourself. Mm, mm. You're doing the best you can. We're all doing the best we can right now. Mm, For sure. For sure. So if that results in cracking the hissy fits or something, if that results in eating a chocolate cake or, you know, binge watching for a day, that's fine. Just be okay with it. Do not judge yourself. Because as soon as we judge it, we make it wrong. When we make it wrong, we make it a situation, a belief, a reaction, and then it becomes something that we do frequently. When we can just allow it and let it go, it'll pass. Mm. Mm. Yes, um. Mm. Is there anything else if you guys feel like you need to speak about today? Nope, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm excited to see what you create. I'll talk to you at eight o'clock tonight, lady. You will? Oh, wait. I'll get one to it as soon as I get home. What time is it there now? Good question. Uh, <laughs> it's one thirty for me. I haven't changed my clock back. I have no idea what time it is. Two o'clock, so it, there you go. It's two o'clock. So you're half an hour right, ahead right, of me. That's not right. No, I'm behind now. <laughs> What are you there? Um, in, you in, in New South Wales, it is just gone one thirty. Okay, so you're the same time as me now, which, yeah, which means yes. I'm half an hour behind now. Right, so you're at one. Okay, so yeah, half an hour behind. So my eight o'clock will give you an extra half an hour. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be eight thirty like, your time. Eight thirty my time. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. You're going to have some fun. You're going to have lots of fun, Shanae. I, um, I can't wait to see what comes out of this because that statement you picked out, I was like, really? You picked that one? But then when we got into that conversation, I was like, oh, because it's the egg that needs to crack for you right now. 
because I'm very creative, but I've also got a bit of a business mind. It's just I don't know enough to express the business side of things. And that's one thing that I think, especially with the business now, that's really, really important is I've got to work on that side of things because I know that's not my strong point, but I do have some there. Mm. And the thing, Sinead, Sinead, if I can offer some ideas for you, yeah. is just just start one thing at a time, just small steps, give it a try. Yeah. Like, just, you know, like put it out there, test the market. You, you might not get much of a response because, you know, you're just trialling and testing. And don't just, just be brave, keep, keep yeah. trialling stuff. Building um, a brand will take about two years, to be honest. What's that? Building a brand will take about two years, but you've got to keep showing up. It's the same with yeah, me with the 10-day immune booster. I'm doing fitness programs. No one's tuning in. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's someone like Shana, if you think how um, comfortable she is in front of the screen because of what she's done, it, it that comes with experience and the more you yeah. experiment and there's plenty of things that do and don't work. But what I love is that you've got that expertise and just in your natural state... You don't need to do anything more than just present that and, you know, like those fun tips and ideas mm. or just saying, hey, this and, you know, just just, just don't try and solve all the problems at once. It's just no. more like one bit at a time, you know, that picture and that does that for you. So just address that one thing that that picture does for you and then somehow get it on on your social media platforms and i've had to learn a lot i've had to learn a lot it doesn't come overnight but no. the thing is if you sit back and think i've got to learn all about it and then i'll do it well you'll end up in a state of um you know being frozen and go nowhere yeah yeah yep. so so a lot of trial and error yeah exactly and just like you know you, you'll learn as you go and actually you know you'll surprise yourself you'll have some fun keep your mm. sense of humor you know yeah throw in yeah. a few random thoughts every now and again see if you get a reaction you know you'll be amazed yeah. what you might get a reaction from yeah 100 percent. keep playing with it mm. all right ladies Definitely. thank you for and jumping I, on and i also try and include my kids you know, I try and involve them in, in different ways so that it's not just a, what I'm doing and I, where I can. Yeah. So you might find ways or sometimes I even ask them, what do they think? And, you know, I, I look, kids are very clever. Oh, definitely. And I'm finding that, like, especially with them at school, the stuff they come home with and they're like, oh, mum, so this, this and this. And I'm like, how did you even figure that out? Like... <laughs> It's amazing to me how their brains work. And for yeah. you, because of the demographic you live in and what you do, it'd almost be like cool to ask her like a questionnaire of like about hair, like with what you do, a questionnaire of some simple questions about and then their, their perspective and record it and mm. use that as a video because people would be like, oh my gosh, and that would go, like that would be a huge booster for you. Yeah. So yeah, many people in your local area would connect to that and be like, oh my God, yeah. Yeah. There's so much you could do with this. So much you could do. Yeah, I'm always open to do. You could do, actually, you could use one of your sessions with me if you want. We can go through a heap of those, that sort of content side of thing. And when yeah. can I have my next session with you, Shana? Whenever you wish, yeah, my darling. Mm. Yep. I'll send you guys the link and you guys can book in. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Love you guys to pieces. Much love. Thank you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.